Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Well, before anything else, I'd like to introduce to you my husband. We just got married last January 14, 2017. And you know, these past months have been a pretty roller coaster ride. It's a mix of emotions. And uh, though we've known each other for eight years already, these past months have been a process of getting to know each other, knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses. And it's a very liberating process and a very important one too. But I hate to admit it. I have a huge confession to make. Along the way, I fell in love with somebody else. I fell in love with a goat. <laughs> Don't you worry. He completely knows about it. He's cool with it. And he supports this love affair. So how come have I fallen in love with a goat? Well, for the past several months, I've been visiting several farms, and I've talked to farmers. I, I looked at their operations. I got a good view of what's going on inside. And I saw that there are a lot of opportunities at hand that we could take advantage of. And of course, there are problems and issues that we need to address in order to further this industry. Of course, I also learned that goats can be also man's best friend. They are very sweet and lovable, just like dogs. Okay? And you can see them in the campus, actually. Right? So I'd like to introduce you to a very important acronym in this industry, and that's MMMK. One farmer has shared this to me, and I couldn't get it off my head. Now, what is MMMK? It's not maalaala mo kaya, of course. But MMMK means meat, milk, manure, and kid. These are the four means by which we could earn from goat. So later, I'll talk more about meat and milk, but let me briefly explain about manure and kid. Manure is also sold, the goat's manure is also sold by farmers to other farmers. Uh, they use it for fertilizer or for vermiculture. Whereas for kids, uh, we could sell them as live goats uh, whenever they're already three months or four months old or at 20 kilograms. And they are sold depending on the breed. For, for example, Anglo-Nubians, they're sold at 10 to 15,000. Or for natives, around 4,000 to 5,000 pesos. So a brief history of goats. Well, they're domesticated over 9,000 years ago from parts in Africa and Asia. And there are actually hundreds of breeds worldwide. But I'd like to introduce you to some of the most common breeds here in the Philippines and that I've really seen uh, during my visits in the farms. First on the list, of course, it's the Philippine native goats. Uh, when you ask farmers, what's the most delicious goat when you cook caldereta or afritada or anything? And they would always say it's native goats. Okay. Another is saanen. Saanen is particularly for milk production, and they could also be suitable for colder climates. The same with la mancha. They are also for milk production. And this type of goat is very distinguishable because it seemingly has no ears. Okay, so ear tagging is particularly more difficult for this type of goat. So some of the farmers put tattoos on their goats just to know uh, who the mother or the father of this goat is, what types of vitamins and injections that were being uh, placed, etc. Okay. For boer, uh, this is particularly for meat production. So if you want to delve into meat production, then boer is really the way to go. So you can't really expect uh, milk so much of milk production for this type of breed. But amongst all the breeds, the most common of all, particularly in, here in Davao region, is the Anglo-Nubians. And it's dual purpose, both for meat and milk. So what's really in the goat industry? What's in it? Well, first, goats are very popular among us Filipinos. We can see you know, goat dishes during weddings, anniversaries, birthday parties, fiestas, and all that. Also, uh, Davao region is one of the top producing regions in terms of dairy, okay? but apparently in terms of international, international arena, we couldn't really see the goat industry from the Philippines. So what we're trying to aim is that uh, the goat industry should be very visible as a contributor to the economy. Okay? And that's a lot of hard work, from, of course, from us and from all of you here, students in the future. Now, as I've said, from the MMMK, we could sell the meat of the goat, okay? And goat meat is one of the healthiest meats that you can eat. So in terms of fat, for example, uh, in terms of um, cholesterol, it's at lowest, and in terms of protein and iron, it's at highest. 
Okay. And aside from that, also from MMMK is the milk. So aside from the usual or more popular flavored milk and fresh milk, we can also have goat cheese, um, yogurt, bread, pastillas, and even soap, shampoo, lotion, hand wash, body wash, and all types of cosmetics. Okay. So what is really the difference between the goat's milk and cow's milk? Just a brief background about it. Well, the cow's milk, the goat's milk rather, is rather smaller and easier to digest. And it's known to, to improve the skin. That's why it's being used in cosmetics. Okay? Whereas the cow's milk is larger and it's more difficult to digest. However, the good thing about cow's milk is that it's cheaper and easier to find in stores. That is why the goat's milk commands higher price or premium price. Okay? Do you know that goat's milk mirrors the human milk or it's second to human milk? Now, if we look at the composition of milk comparing the goat, the cow, and the human milk, we can see that the figures under the goat's milk resemble that of the human milk. That's why um, New Zealand, for example, produce um, infant milk powder out of the goat's milk. Okay. We also have to note that there are three main stakeholders for this particular industry. One is the goat racers, of course. Second is the government. And third, it's us, the consumers. And these three main stakeholders should be able to work collaboratively if, if really want to further this industry. And in return, all the benefits will also go to these main stakeholders and its indirect stakeholders. So what I did was just very simple. It's a SWOT analysis. I know a lot of you here ha have already done SWOT an analysis. And this is a first step to the many steps that we have to do in order for us to further the industry. So there are a lot of researches that we could do out of it. So we list down the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and threats, and then we analyze them. Strengths times opportunities, weakness times opportunities, weaknesses times opportunities, uh, weaknesses times threats. And out of that, we come up with strategies that we could use both for the short term and long term. So what are the strengths? First is that goats are relatively easy to manage because, of course, they're smaller. Okay? And they also require lesser capital as compared to cow. That is why it is called the poor man's cow because they're smaller and cheaper compared to cow. Cows, when you buy them, it's around 80,000 to 100,000 pesos. Whereas goats, you can buy them depending on the breed. At, if native, it's 4,000 to 5,000. If it's Anglo-Nubian, then it's 10,000 to 15,000. Of course, depending also on the weight of uh, the goats. Another strength is that uh, we have diversified marketing products. As you saw earlier, there are a lot of products that we could come up out of goat. For milk alone, there are a lot of byproducts. And also, it is a healthy option as presented earlier. However, there are weaknesses to this industry. One is that there are fewer people who are getting attracted to this industry. So basically, it's a backyard industry. It's a developing industry, meaning there are only a few farmers or racers who are doing it at a large scale. Okay. Also, there's minimal government assistance or maybe no government assistance in terms of marketing. So it has been a consistent remark of goat racers that they've been given you know, input supplies like injections, vitamins, goat stocks, uh, seeds for forage production, but they're not being taught on how to market the goats or how to market the products. So even if you have abundant input supply, but you don't know how to market them, you don't know how to sell them, then it's still useless. So for easy money, what racers would usually do, they would just sell the, the goats immediately, okay, or call them for during birthday parties. Okay, so they couldn't multiply the goats at that. Another weakness is that there's minimal technical know-how of farmers. I've also tried to talk to um, aspiring farmers or farmers who are startups, and I learned that they ventured into goat farming even without any technical know-how about it. They don't know how to raise the goats. They don't know how to detect the symptoms if there are illnesses. They don't know how to treat the illnesses. They don't know um, what to feed the goats, or uh, they don't even know that you need a huge land to to uh, produce forage for, for the goats. So that's really one thing that we should also look into. Also, there's little awareness of goat products, right? We don't know that there are goat's milk soap in Bansalan or anything like that. But what's the good thing about this industry is that there are opportunities at hand, okay? 
One is that it is also a consistent remark of farmers that supply is greater than demand. Okay? That is why sometimes they produce the output or they produce the, the orders by installment just so they could complete the order. Okay? So with demand, we don't have that much of a problem, but with supply, yes, we have a problem. Also, another opportunity is that the Philippine Dairy Industry or the National Dairy Authority has been looking into focusing into goat industry as a source of milk because they've been focusing on cows recently, uh, past, in the past. Another opportunity is that the forage production itself can be an enterprise because, as you know, there are, uh, for 10 to 15 goats, you need about one-fourth hectare of land for the forages. And you know, goats are picky eaters. You have to rotate the types of forages that they have to eat. Okay. So that, that's a lot for the land alone. Another opportunity, of course, is that we, have, we still have vast uh, areas of land for goat raising that's suitable for, for goat production and even for forage production. We also have potential for export and untapped market potentials. And as a matter of fact, there is a shift of consumer preferences towards healthier options. And goat products is a healthier option. However, sad to say, there are also threats to this industry. One is that there's a shortage of, breed, of quality breeding stocks, meaning there are goats uh, which have abnormalities. So if these goats have abnormalities, it affects their output in terms of milk, for example, and you cannot sell them as live goats. So the last resort would be to sell, to sell them as live goat or to call them or sell them as meat. Okay? So if you sell them as meat and you're not doing it uh, in a mass production way, then it's not profitable. So if you want into meat, to go into meat production, it has to be uh, into mass production. Another threat is that uh, our technicians, experienced farmers are leaving the country, going to New Zealand, going to Australia. And of course, another threat is that there's importation, around 96 to 99% of our milk products are imported, and there's diseases, so it affects the mortality of the goats. So out of this, we have to come up with strategies that we could use to further the industry, right? So one is that we have to intensify the marketing efforts for this industry. We have to patronize local products okay, and make the people know that there are really products out of, out of code. Also, we have to encourage investors to, to uh, enter into this industry and go into mass production, whether it be milk, whether it be meat. Okay? Because through mass production, uh, you can achieve economies of scale. So with economies of scale, there would be a lower amount or lower price per output as because you're, you're producing it in a, in a large volume, okay? Also, um, related to that is diversified products because you know there are a lot of products that we could, we could get out of goat, so we have to make use of that, okay? So go into mass production with your diversified products, okay? Another is that I think we should provide more trainings and seminars to our farmers and let them know really how to go about with the operations, okay? And also assist them on the marketing side. I, don't, I think it's not just only with the GOAT, but even also with the other industries, that is also a problem, the, the assistance on the marketing side. Also, we have to increase incentives towards the farmers and technicians who are experienced because if, it, if we are left with inexperienced ones, then we are left hanging and we don't know what to do afterwards. So we have to really increase incentives so as to allow them to grow in the industry and help us also in improving the industry. We also have to improve the forage supply because, again, uh, goats can eat about 10 kilos a day of grass, okay, uh, aside from feeds. So that's a lot of, of grass. So you really have you, you really have to have a huge land for you to for you to raise your goats. We also have to increase quality breeding stocks. We have to make sure that when we breed these animals, they are of good genetic resources, okay, so that the output will not be um, they will not be jeopardized in terms of meat, in terms of milk and meat, and also in terms of live goats. And that would also, if we increase quality breeding stocks, that would also um, encourage more investors to invest, right, for new entrants to enter into the industry. And lastly, the last strategy that um, I've listed down here is assistance on health management. Though the government provides assistance in terms of providing injections, uh, vitamins, they do checkups on the, the goats, well, farmers, other farmers are not aware of it. So they have to be aware that there's assistance from the government. But I believe that the farmers themselves should also know how to detect illnesses, or they also have to know how to treat these uh, diseases. Okay? Um, the problem here in the Philippines is that some of the farmers uh, manage their farms remotely. 
So they leave them with their caretakers, and these caretakers do not take care of these goats. So they leave them dying. So, you know, losing uh, 10,000 worth of goat, for example, is very painful, right? Okay. Therefore, in this industry, we need to do a holistic approach, meaning you have to hit three birds in one stone. So as for the government, we have to uh, improve our assistance in terms of trainings and seminars, in terms of assistance on marketing. And as consumers, we should be able to patronize these local products and make it known. And uh, as for the goat racers, they have to improve their operations, may it be in terms of forage, in terms of uh, health management, and in terms of goat racing. So um, let me ask you this question. Actually, I could talk all day about goat because I'm in love with goats, right? So let me tell you that, let's, let me ask you this question. Is there any chance that you'd fall in love with a goat? Yes? <laughs> so, if I go to have any last words, I'd say you should fall in love with a goat too. Together, let's do research. Together, let's build this industry. Cheers to greener pastures. Thank you very much.